Not many people know that all the physical products around us are basically designed by engineers using a CAD software. This was the industry that made the first use of high-performance computation in the early days, already in the 60s. However, those computers weighted tons and not kilograms. I'm Akos Kapui, the CTO of Shaper 3D. We are building a three-dimensional modeling tool for design professionals and manufacturing professionals. There are a few industries that didn't change in the last 20 years significantly, and one of them is CAD software. This created an opportunity for us uh, in Shaper 3D because we believe that there is a different way to do that. Making Shaper 3D available on the Snapdragon platform was a straightforward process. We already supported multiple processor architecture, so therefore the transition was very smooth. That was not possible before. There has been a lot of development in the last 20 years with the arrival of mobile devices, the performance that is available on any device in your pocket. It's just changed how we work, how we communicate and how we share information. Most of the CAD development software is available on Windows and this is the major platform for us. One of the core values of Shaper 3D is having very strong performance, but also enabling customers to use the devices, the mobile devices on the go. And this was only possible on Windows using a Snapdragon platform. And that was a, a crucial part of our development uh, process. CAD software is a very interesting industry. It requires significant performance from CPU, from GPU, and also from memory. And that makes the work very, very complicated. Initially, all the products were based on desktop computers for the very reason, because performance was not available on mobile devices. But the arrival of ARM and also the recent development in the last few years made it possible to utilize the same amount of performance on mobile devices by also reducing the power consumption. And this is where Snapdragon plays an important um, role most of the work was around making sure that we have the most possible performance and optimizing both rendering and the computation on Snapdragon. When you support multiple devices, multiple computer architecture, it usually comes with trade-offs. But when we arrived to Snapdragon, it was clear that we didn't have to change and make any trade-offs in the development. We could support high-end devices as well as low-end devices, and based on that, uh, maximize the performance for all the users uh, that have uh, access to our products. What I would suggest to fellow companies and fellow developers who are interested in moving to ARM and supporting Snapdragon platform is to invest in technological foundation early on. Uh, using cutting edge technologies to make the transition process a lot faster. Also investing in CI and continuous integration early on is an important piece because if that is not supported then uh, updating the code base, making changes day to day will be a lot more difficult than it was uh, before. Also, as we work with open source libraries, I think uh, that would be very useful if uh, whenever there is a new open source library that needed to be converted to support ARM, would be great to push those changes back to the open source repository, making sure that other companies can also make good use of those changes. By the time we have all uh, or majority of the open source libraries available uh, on all platforms, that will make uh, the transition for other companies much easier. That would be great to build a community around this.